Hey everybody, welcome to part two of how to make your own space shooter game with Swift and Xcode. Today we'll be dealing a lot with contact and collisions and physics, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so this is what we're going to accomplish. I have a player, he's putting out bullets, and these bullets can actually affect every enemy and kill them. And then when we hit the enemy ourselves, we are going to die and move to another scene. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's open up our Galaga1.xcode project, as I improperly named it for some reason. We need to head over to our gamescene.swift, and inside of our gamescene.swift, we are just going to say a struct. So we're going to build this structure, and this is also right outside of your game scene class. So we're going to build this structure right up here that is actually going to call each of our... Say if we have our enemy right down here, we're going to call our enemy and give it a specific integer. And this will allow things to collide later on. So let's go up here into our structure, and we're just going to call this structure name physics category. And inside of this physics category, we need to say static let, and this will be our enemy, equal or colon uint32. Uh, so this is going to be basically a 32 bit integer, which means there's going to be 32 zeros equal equals one. So in in binary, this would mean we'd have 32 zeros and the last one of these zeros would be one. It's pretty simple. And then down here we need to say static let, uh, pr uh, this will be our bullet, colon uint32 equal two, which again would make this equal I'm getting ahead of myself, which again, would this would actually make it equal 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and this would be 1 right here. So it, we're just turning on different 1s and zeros in order to actually get the enemy and the bullet to collide. And for our last person, we should just say static let, uh, this will be our person. So this is going to be our main guy that we want to keep alive. And we want to say this was a uint32 equals three. And again, it would basically be the same thing as this, just with the third one turned on. Correct me if I'm wrong in the download, in the comments sections down below, but I believe that's how it's supposed to be. All right, so now that we have our physics category all set up, we need to go down here to our game scene. And first thing we need to do is add physics to our person. Now our person, or our player, I should have called, I should have called this player actually, static let, and this will be player, just to not confuse things. So we say static let player uint32. So down here we want to add our physics body to our player. And this is going to allow us to add physics onto our player. So in order to do this we just say player dot physics body. It already has a physics body but we need to edit it. So player dot physics body equals sk physics body open parentheses and this is going to be rectangle of size and this will just be our player player dot size. So we're basically just grabbing the size of our player that's already there and putting it inside of our physics dot body. All right, so now that we actually have our physics body onto our player, if we were to build and run this right now, we should see some physics being applied to our person, but not the physics that we want. We don't want any gravity affecting our person. So in order to fix this, you just say player dot physics body dot affected by gravity will be e equal to false. So we want to just turn that off. So now if we were to build and run, we should get our player just automatically, he's going to be in the same way that we were doing before. So now that we have that on, let's go down here and down to our player again. Give him a category as we just created right up here. So we're giving him one of these integers that we created right up here, and we're gonna put it right in, down here into our player. So we can say player, dot physics body dot category bit mask will be equal to physics category will be created up here the structure right up here physics category dot player so we're giving him this physics body now we can go down here again and we can say player dot physics body dot contact test bit mask is equal to physics category dot enemy so this is basically saying we want to check if we're colliding with the enemy because we don't want to touch the enemy or else we'll die. That's basically what it's saying. 
Now go down here and we want to say player dot physics body dot dynamic will be equal to false. This will just make it so things don't exactly affect it the way we want to. All right, and now we want to go down here to our spawn bullets and we're going to add a, a physics body onto it. So we can go down here and we also want to do this right before we add our child onto our scene. This way, everything that you see is automatically going to be put inside of the bullet anytime it's added to the child. So I'm going to make sure I did that up here. Yep, it's right all before this self.add player. So now we need to go down here inside of our spawn bullets and say bullet dot physics body equals sk sk physics body open parentheses and this is going to be rectangle of size and again we're going to say bullet dot size now go down here and we're going to add some more bullet dot physics body dot category category bit mask will be equal to physics body dot and this will I mean physics category physics category dot bullet so there we have it. Uh, now we have our bullet connected with this integer that we have right up here. Then we need to go down here and we're going to say bullet dot physics body dot collision bit mask, or actually this will be a, a contact dot contact contact test bit mask will be equal to our physics a category dot enemy. So we're going to make sure that the enemy is not touching this. And then lastly, we need to go down here and say bullet dot effect physics body dot affected by gravity will be equal to false so the bullets don't go flying off into the neverland. So now if we were to build and run this right now, we would actually see that our bullets, they're running, they're, they're fine. But they're also avoiding our person, which is not fine. So in order to fix this, we need to go down here to our bullet and we need to say bullet dot dynamic bullet dot physics body dot dynamic equal to false i keep just wanting to say bullet dot dynamic and that is not right so now we need to build and run this real quick and we could and now you will see that the bullet is not interacting with our person in in any way now the diff we want this to be different for our enemies so down here in our enemies we need to say enemy dot physics body equals sk physics body open parentheses rectangle of size and this is going to be enemy dot size again and then go down here and enemy dot physics body dot physics body dot category I keep category bit mask equals physics category dot enemy so we're applying them again with those numbers that we have up there. So now we have enemy, and then enemy dot physics body dot contact test bit mask. So again, we're testing who is this person colliding with and what happens when we collide with him. So we can say contact bit mask, and we want him to go with the physics category dot bullet, like so. And then we lastly need to say enemy or there's a few other things. Enemy dot physics body dot affected by gravity is equal to false. And lastly, we need to say enemy dot physics body dot dynamic will again be equal to true this time. So now if we were actually to see this real quick, we'll see some bullets bouncing off of him and we'll see the person bouncing off of him. So we were to build and run this, you will see, boom, they're bouncing off. That is exactly what we want. This is not exactly what we want. Uh, we will fix this in just a moment. So now let's head back to our project and we can go down here to our spawn bullets. And I actually did something a bit wrong in the first part of this whole section. We need to say bullet.position equals CG point make. That is perfectly fine. Uh, we want to make the action part of this is not fine. So we need to go down here and we say uh, let action action done equal SK action dot remove remove from parent so this is going to remove our bullet from our scene and last thing down here we need to go to our bullet and we say bullet dot run action 
and this is going to be sk action dot sequence. And this is going to be, we're going to apply the action. So we say open bracket, close bracket, like that. And inside of this action, we want to first do our action. And then once this action is done, once it has reached that positive 30, we want to say action done, and then remove it from our parent. And also it's missing another parentheses. So now if we were to build and run this, we will actually get things to look a bit more normal as things weren't really deleting up there before. Now things are deleting and we will, and you can see that these enemies aren't coming down at weird angles anymore, which is just how we wanted it. Now down here uh, inside of our enemies, we want to do the exact same thing. So as this action is moving, we want to go down here and say let action done equal sk action. And also I forgot, you don't need this part right here inside of our bullet. We need to take this part off right here that says repeat action forever as we are finished that right there. So now go down here and we can say let action done equal sk action dot remove from parent and then enemy dot run action and this will be sk action dot sequence open print open bracket close bracket and inside of those brackets we can again put our action comma and then action done. And then end those off with the parentheses and everything. So now if we were to build and run this, we will see, again, it's gonna be the exact same thing that we were just noticing before, except you have that contact and everything is perfectly fine. Now we want to actually take these contacts that are happening and make things happen. So in order to do this, go down here to your class game scene and right after SK scene right up here, we need to say comma, and we are going to add SK physics contact delegate. So we want our scene to delegate what happens when we interact, when two objects interact. Now alongside this delegate that we just added, we actually get a new function out of this as well. And this is known as did, did begin contact. So basically what this is doing is you can see up here player.physicsbody.contact test bit mask equals physics category dot enemy. So this is going to say trigger this did begin contact. And then we're going to run some functions off of this contact. So if I were to actually just write in here ns log hello. And also we forgot one last thing. This is crucial. I spent hours trying to figure out why on earth my my stuff wasn't working. But this is super crucial. We need to say physics world dot contact delegate equals self very crucial or else your contacts will not work properly so now if we were to build and run this right now we would actually get our contact delegate calling all of our uh, all of these functions it keeps saying hello anytime we get some objects hitting as you can see right there so there you have it that is how this did begin contact works. So now we want to take this did begin contact and apply it to our people. So instead of saying NS log hello, we want to actually take what objects are hitting each other and do stuff with them. So we can easily say var first uh, first body uh, colon equals sk physics body and this will be equal to our contact dot body a. Now our body A, if you don't know where I'm getting that from, is it's right inside of this physics body contact that we have inside of our function. So we're basically taking the first body that hits and the second body that hits and doing stuff with it. So we can say var second body will be, again, will be a colon sk physics body equal to our contact dot body B this time. And then now down here, we want to say if our first body dot category bit mask is equal equal to as this is a comparison comparison statement so if our first body dot uh, category bit mask is equal equal to physics category physics category dot enemy and our second body so and and or ampersand ampersand uh, and our second body we want to say second body 
dot category bit mask is equal equal to our physics category dot bullet then we want stuff to happen and also I forgot to add some parentheses around this as we will be putting this all as one okay so now we have these if statements and now inside of this if statement we want to call a function and we're gonna create this function right now and we're gonna say func a collide or collision with bullet so this will be called anytime our collision happens with our bullet and then we're going to add some nodes or sk sprite nodes into this so our first node will be our enemy and this will be our be an sk sprite node and then comma and this one will be our bullet and this will be our sk sprite node as well and then add some open curly bracket and then hit enter and close curly bracket. Now, first off, we're just going to put an ns log in there and make sure that we have everything set up. And then inside of here, we want to say collision with bullet. And our enemy will be equal to our first body dot node. And this will be as an nsk sprite node. So we're taking this node as our first body and we're plunk plunking it in as an sk sprite node now the reason i have to do this is because if i were i can't call just the bullet that i created because it's it's specifically called inside of this function right here and this is also really important to game development as you want to call more and more people uh, you need to create more and more objects as well and that's not going to play well if you just have one variable that's outside of your function up here so that's why you need this inside of one function and build it over and over again. Now, this bullet will not be referenced, so we need to do an extra special way of referencing those bullets or those enemies. So we need to say collision with bullet, and this will be first body dot node as sk sprite node, and our bullet will be equal to our second body dot node with our as an sk sprite node. So now, if we were to build and run this, you will see that when we get these button, once these things collide, we will get our hello being called. So as soon as these collide, we're getting hello being called as we exactly wanted. Now, instead of it just saying hello, which is kind of boring in a game, we need to say our enemy dot remove from parent and our, our this will be our bullet dot remove from parent so now if we were to build and run this right now we would get our enemy and our bullet when they collide they disappear so as you can see the bullets when they hit they're off and on that's that's because when you're actually referencing this it could be either the first body is the category dot bit mask or the other body is the category dot bit mask so in order to fix this you actually want to just copy this whole if statement right there inside of those parentheses we're going to click enter and we're going to add that right afterwards and then right in the between here we want to say straight lined up twice and this is going to say if the first body category dot bit mask is true or if this one's true then we can build and run this right now or actually this won't work uh, we need to actually replace our enemy and this was the whole reason i did this inside of our first body dot category bit mask we need to say physics body category dot bullet and we're basically just switching these around so if there's a if the category is bullet or if the category is enemy then we want our people to die if that's the correct term so now if we were to take this and now you will see that no matter what, the bullets are hitting and they are automatically killing all the enemies. There is no more context going on. Now if you want, I, I want to actually shrink down how fast these bullets are going. So let's go up here to our, our spawn. And I'm just going to set the timer to 3. So every three, 0.3 seconds we get a bullet being called. And we also want our bullet... Uh, to go a bit slower. So in order to do this, I'm going to go up here to my bullet and inside of this action I'm going to make the duration just 0 0.8 And now if we were to build and run this just 
tweaking these things myself. You, of course, can make this however you want and make it however you like it, but I'm going to make mine a bit slower, as I like that. So now, as you will see, we have no more bouncing bullets, and we have our enemies dying every time the bullet hits. Now, another thing that we want to happen is we want to, our score to go up. Scoring. That's awesome. So now we need to say var score equals something actually simple. That's why I cheered. So a var score will be equal to a, an integer. So go up here to your game scene and we'll say var score equals an integer, open parentheses, close parentheses. And then we need to go down here and we're going to say collision with bullet. So anytime this collision happens, we want our people to die and also our score to go up. And right now we're just going to NS log our score as well anytime our we get a hit just so we can see what's going on. So we can say NS log, open quotation mark, close quotation mark, and inside of this we need to say score. So we're going to reference our score anytime this is built. So if we can build and run this right now. So now if I just killed that person, we should see our score going up like so. So now that that's done, we need to add this onto a label so our people can see it. So we need to say var, UI label, or we need to actually create this right outside of our did move to view function. So it is not just, it's not private, it's universal. So we need to say var, and this will be our score label is equal to a UI label, open parentheses, close parentheses. Now we can go down here and we're going to add this label onto our scene by simply saying score label dot text will be equal to open parentheses, close parentheses, open uh, or slash, open parentheses, close parentheses, I keep quotation mark, quotation mark, slash, open parentheses, close parentheses, and inside of those, we need to say score. So we're adding the score as our text. So now we need to programmatically set the size, and you just need to say score, score label equals UI label, open parentheses, and this is going to give us a frame. So we're going to set this frame as a CG rect. So we need to say CG rect, uh, the CG rect, and this will just open parentheses, and inside of this we want to have the X, Y width and height. So our X, Y value will just make it actually our self, or we'll make it zero, zero. Our width, uh, this will just put it right in the corner. We'll deal with the X and Y value in just a minute. Our width will be equal to, uh, we'll say 100, and our height will be equal to 20. Now we need to say with our score label, score, uh, score label dot background color will be equal to, and we're just going to make this a UI color dot black color, or actually we need to say UI color open parentheses, and we're going to add an RGB. I'm just going to make this a light gray color, so the red will be 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and our alpha will be equal to a 0 0.3, as we want this to be kind of invisible. Now go down here, and inside of our score label, we can also say score label dot, and this will be our text color, and this will make our color a UI color dot white color. And lastly, we just need to add this onto our scene. So we just say self dot view dot add sub view. And this is different than adding a child. This is adding a sub view, which is going to be our score label. So just type that in. So we're adding this UI label view that we have, and we're adding that onto our scene. So if we were to build and run this right now, you will see that we have our label right up here. And right now, our score is zero, so we're not really getting anything out of this. So in order to get something out of our label, we just need to put it to go down here to our uh, did co collision with bullet. And instead of this NS log, we want to say score label dot text will be equal to open quotation mark, close quotation mark, slash, open parentheses, close parentheses, and this will be our score. So now if we were to build and run this, we will see our score going up as you should see. There you have it. One, two, three, four, five. Of course, you will want to edit this yourself. You could easily go up here and you can make this like a nice red color or anything that you want. I'll make it dominant red right now.
So now we have a red and nice red color. And now lastly, we want this to be collided with our person with our enemy. So now we need to create another function and this will be collision collision uh, with a person. So when we collide with a person, again, we want this to be an enemy and this will be our SK as an SK sprite node and this will be our person as an SK sprite node. So now we have this done, we can automatically go up here to our did begin contact. And when these did begin contacts, we can go click on this if statement, just copy and paste that. And we want to say else if. So else if the first body dot category bit mask equals physics category dot and this will be our yeah, we'll say enemy as our first one and our person as our second one or our player. I meant to call it player. Our player as our second one, and then again we need to replace these so they are just around. So our first body will be equal to our player, and our second body will be equal to our enemy. Yeah, that's exactly how we want it. And then now inside of this st if statement, we want to say collision with person, and our enemy at this time will be equal to our first body dot node, and our person will be equal to our second body dot node. And again, this will be as an SK sprite for SK sprite node for both of them. So put that in there as SK sprite node. And inside of this collision, we can easily just say uh, enemy dot remove from parent. And then we want to say player dot remove from parent. Or this will be this will actually be our person dot remove from parent. And then we also want to switch scenes. So this is actually, I'm going to quickly do this. We're not going to mess with the game over scene just yet. So we need to say file, new file, new file. And this is going to be a, a go into your user interface or inside of your resource. We need to go into our resource and inside of our resource, we will have an SK sprite kit scene. Go ahead, click we're going to create this is going to be my scene.sks. I might want to rename this. Let's go ahead, click on that, and this will just be end scene.sks. That SKS means sprite kit scene, if you didn't know. And now we're going to go over to our end scene.sks, open up our sidebar right over here, and over here you should see like a hexagonal pyramid thing, and our name of our scene will just be end scene. So now we have this name already made for it. Now if we were to go into our game scene.swift, when we have a collision with person, we want to remove our person as well as the enemy. And then we want to say self.scene or self.view.present scene. And we want to present the scene that we just created. So we want to say SK scene, SK scene, open parentheses, file named, and this is going to be our end scene. So now we're presenting our SK scene with file named end scene. So now if we were to build and run this, you should see that we have our end scene created like so. So now I'm going to collide and boom, we head on over to our end scene. So that's it. Uh, as you can see, the label was also there. So if you want to delete that label, you can also just uh, go back to your collision with person and say uh, score label dot remove from super view. Now if we were to build and run this, we should see as we collide with our person, boom, it's removed. That is it for this tutorial. And that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this for me in the future, be sure to subscribe down below. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.